Thank you. <clears throat> well, um, so good morning, everybody. Thank you, uh, Dean Brown. I really never thought I would be coming back to my alma mater to do a speech about something other than apologizing. Um, <laughs> seriously. Uh, no, thank you all very much for getting up this morning and a uh, nice warm day here in Albuquerque. Um, I was just in Phoenix this last weekend and uh, um, they were over there going, gosh, it's so cold, it's so cold. And you know, it's like 51. It's not cold. <laughs> but I guess it's all relative. Anyway, um, seriously, uh, it's, it's a great honor to be here. Um, I'm thrilled to, be, thrilled to death to be here representing hot air ballooning, uh, Albuquerque tourism, the balloon fiesta, and, and the economy that goes with it. And it's a little bit more significant than that what I think a lot of people really understand. So it's a great opportunity for me to come on out here, say my two cents, and to try to give you an idea as to what exactly it does do and what it can do. Um, I met with my accountant last week to do the year-end taxes. And he says, oh, that's a real simple one. All you gotta do is walk up and say, well, I get to do what I love to do, and I get a paycheck. So I'm done, thank you very much. <laughs> no. Anyway, uh, and, and he's right, um, it is true. I'm, I'm very blessed, I'm very lucky. I literally get paid to fly a hot air balloon and to promote the city of Albuquerque and uh, be part of people's memories. And that's something that I don't take too lightly. When I first started, um, I never would have thought, I, I started out doing this for fun, um, just recreationally. And then I decided I was gonna kind of move it into a business. And uh, a guy named Sid Cutter looked at me and he said, uh, you know the only way to make a million dollars in this business is to start with two million. And uh, he was right. <laughs> but uh, with a lot of passion and a lot of work, it seems to have worked out. A little bit about my background. Uh, came to Albuquerque 43 years ago with my mom and my dad. My dad, who's here with us today, and I'm thrilled to death to have him here. My mom, um, unfortunately, passed about nine years ago. Uh, my mom, a little history on her, she was actually the second female legislator in the state of New Mexico. And um, she got me a hell of a parking pass while I was going to UNM. I'm not going to get to. In fact, Fred was a, a, a state rep with uh, my mom up in Santa Fe at the time. So I got to, to meet a lot of different things. But we came from Los Angeles, California. My father came out here to do this thing. Electrical engineer came out um, from having this nice big home in Southern California with a pool and everything and two boys that were 12 and 10 years old. And he left the. Um, um, satellite development business at that point to come on out for a company that was going to do teaching machines. Today we call them computers. Unfortunately, there were some unscrupulous folks that decided to do some less than mm, fraudulent, I guess it was very fraudulent type of things. And the next thing you know, my father's moved us all out here from California. We're in uh, three months later, the company's got some serious issues. However, my dad being the resourceful man that he is, um, in January of 1971, we had 17 below zero and four feet of snow in the city of Albuquerque. So he started a plumbing business here in Albuquerque called Academy Plumbing and Heating. And at the bright age of 13, and I think he was right in his 40s, we drove around in the back of his Alfa Romeo with a can of gas thawing out water meters. Um, so that's how we ended up here in California, uh, in uh, New Mexico. In 1972, I was going to Hayes, Middle, Hayes Junior High. Um, they were having this thing at the state fairgrounds. It was a, like a, a balloon thing. I was like, hmm, this is kind of cool. So I cut class, and I went up there to go see what it was all about. On, uh, and I was a pretty good kid, because well, I was just scared to death of my mom and dad. <laughs> um, and I didn't want to get in trouble. Well, I kept cutting class that whole week and went on out there and just had a great time. Um, towards the end of the week, I was helping this guy from Italy. He didn't speak a word of English. I'm 13 years old. Stuff like, he goes, come on, let's go for a ride. Okay, I've been out here doing this. I went for a ride. Well, the state fairgrounds, we all know where that's located. And back in the early 70s, there was this little thing called Manzano Mountain that had those three little fences and people with not much patience and big guns. Um, we landed inside the third fence. Um, and now we have an Italian screaming, an Italian, a 13-year-old in tears, and 18-year-olds surrounding us with M16s. <laughs> so after working our way out of that, 
I thought it was a great way of going to do it. As I was going through school, I sold, I'd made pizzas, I did shoes, I was a lifeguard, I got to work at Academy Plumbing, I got to do a lot of different things. I, uh, when I was working and going to school here at UNM and through the Anderson School, oh, I wanted to start off, I was going to be a dentist. Man, I was going to be a dentist, I was a science and math guy, I had this down, I was going to knock it out. And this is one of those moments that you go, oh my gosh, this actually happened. So I'm sitting in a genetics class. It was actually 373, Professor Johnson. There was, obviously there's something here that still clicks. I can't remember what I did yesterday, but anyway, and I'm sitting in this class about three or four weeks into the class and I go, I don't have a clue of an idea. I have no idea. So I ended up reevaluating. I came over and met with the uh, counselors here and wish, I was trying to remember her name. She was an awesome lady. Um, here at the Anderson School, and next thing you know, I end up uh, coming into the Anderson School, spending the next two years here, and having a, just an amazing education and experience, and, and I've never really felt as motivated uh, um, going through school as I did through those two years. Uh, it's amazing what kind of grades and what you can do when you find something that you really enjoy. I end up getting my degree in finance uh, and economics. Um, there was a couple of professors here that were very profound, and had a huge effect upon me, and uh, I really appreciate what the Anderson School has provided me with those opportunities. While I was going through school, I was working for the family business. I attained my general contracting and my mechanical contracting licenses. I also had journeyman's cards, but as time went on, um, we realized I just shouldn't really work with tools. Um, <laughs> I was okay in management, but apparently I couldn't do that. As I got ready to graduate, <laughs> As I got ready to graduate uh, from Anderson, um, through their placement services, I had a job offer with E.F. Hutton and Republic National Bank of Dallas. Um, I elected to stay here and then uh, went into the family business for a couple years. My dad had taken us on a fishing trip to Hawaii. Mama, and uh, we sat on a charter boat out there catching marlin, tuna, it was awesome. I mean, you know, you're like, 23 and you're out here doing this, you're the king of the world. And I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I want to do this. I'm going to come on out and get a boat and go do this off of, off of Hawaii. Well, <laughs> I realized I didn't have a boat and I really don't know how to fish out there, out in the ocean. <laughs> but it was that day that I realized I actually flew hot air balloons. And I realized that there was the opportunity to be able to try to take my hobby, my recreation, and turn it into a real business. So that's how Rainbow Riders kind of got started. Um, after I left, the, I was the oldest son. My father had just built, uh, built a building and bought a building for the, the company. Um, he wasn't real pleased when I left. Um, however, I don't know, it was, it's weird because my little brother, younger brother, um, he's taller. Um, <laughs> my younger brother, I had gotten him into the, into the uh, company. And it was, it was almost kind of like, almost kind of pre-planned on the whole deal, but the, you know, he ended up taking over and, and doing his thing there while I ended up started, um, starting uh, Rainbow Riders. Currently, I'm a commercial lighter than air with airborne heater. Is that a great government name? Um, hot air balloon pilot with 4,500 hours. I've flown in 43 different states, three countries. I'm president, CEO of Rainbow Riders and the single, uh, the sole shareholder. Rainbow Riders currently owns 22 hot air balloons. Um, and it's the largest balloon fleet um, in the country. We've celebrated 30 years of business um, this year in September. We operate in Albuquerque, Phoenix, and Scottsdale, and we fly about 20,000 people a year right now. Uh, we have 50 employees year round, and it goes up to about 200 employees during the balloon fiesta. One of our bigger items that we also do is we do a lot of corporate promotions. Oh, damn, I'm supposed to be doing this. That was me then. Amanda Ray. Yeah, I know. See, there it is. <laughs> that's me when I was really, really young. Now, if you see this guy right back here on the side over here, that's Jimmy Garcia. Jimmy is one that does, uh, his twin brother, Johnny, you might know him from economic development, and Jimmy's doing Sadie's, used to do El Pinto. But Jimmy and Johnny and I used to be roommates back when we all graduated from Highland. So anyway, that's when both Jimmy and I were much younger. Um, there we go. We're going to get there. Here's, a, 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 here's some of our pilots and some of our uh, uh, photo ops that we get um, um, in both the markets. Obviously, the saguaros are not in Albuquerque. Um, sorry about that. Uh, currently, like I said, um, we also do a lot of corporate balloons um, 
that we've gotten to do some amazing things. The hot air balloon ride business is a lot of fun. There's a lot of risk that goes with it. You're also kind of a modern day farmer. You know, we could have a group of three or 500 people at Balloon Fiesta and it's a nice day of work, but you could also have 20 mile an hour winds. And there's those days that are that way. But the bottom line is, is that's, that's the nature of the beast. We've operated corporate balloons for uh, Dos Equis. We currently are Phillips 66, Santa Ana Star Casino, the city of Albuquerque, Albuquerque Down, state of New Mexico, Ocean Spray, Gateway Pepsi, and many, many more. Now, one of my most memorable hands down moment, without a doubt, is that Ocean Spray picture coming out of Central Park in New York City. That was a brand new balloon that had just been built. That was the first flight. I had spent five years when I quit the family business, I said, I had just come back from the US Nationals. I'd finished in the top 10. I rocked it. I had, the, I had it figured out. I, got it. I was going to come on in here. I was going to get myself a sponsor like DuPont or Lowe's, just like the guys in NASCAR. And I'm just going to go and get paid, travel around the country, and do everything. Five years later, <laughs> We got three contracts in a 30-day period of time. And in the meantime, those five years, obviously, we had to eat. But Ocean Spray was the one. Ocean Spray was the biggie that literally we did the deal over the phone in a 30-day period of time, built this balloon. And next thing you know, on a Labor Day weekend, they tried to do this event for years. And of course, the first year I go there, the weather's perfect for it. So we go ahead and do it, and I fly out of Central Park. So. You know, I was worried about filling up all the time and I'm not going as fast as I should be on what I've got. Anyway, um, so when we were sitting there in Central Park, Mayor Giuliani had said, you guys, here's a telephone for you, for you guys if there's any issues or anything like that. So I take off out of Central Park. I've never been to New York City in my life, nonetheless fly an air balloon out of there <laughs> without a steering wheel. And this is the first flight this balloon has done. This is all good. I had people say, oh, let me go with you, let me go with you. It's like, no, I don't want to do this. You just can't do it that way. So anyway, I get up in the air and I go, holy mackerel, there is a lot of tall buildings. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets past this boy. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you know, you're going up and stuff like that and you fly and I got, out, got over the buildings and I'm going, oh my God, this is amazing. And then I started thinking, God, I got to land at some point. So I come on down and I'm going over the Hudson River. And, um, you know, I'm going to the Hudson River. Now, here in Albuquerque, we do splash and dashes all the time. Uh-huh, well, it ain't the Rio Grande. <laughs> mm -mm. Anyway, so I'm about this high above the river, and I'm talking to people on boats and things like that. It's totally awesome. So anyway, I'm, now I'm flying towards New Jersey, where everybody's welcome. And um, <laughs> me, I'm just sitting here going, OK, I just want to find a landing site. So I ended up flying on, and there was a soccer uh, field. And I landed in the soccer field. Now I'm greeted by three of New Jersey's finest state troopers. Lights blaring, there's kids in soccer playing soccer. I've got a brand new white ocean spray balloon. They're walking all over it. Kids are walking up to me going, are you from outer space? <laughs> anyway, um, remember the Mayor Giuliani gave us the telephone? Well, about this time, they're now putting handcuffs on me um, because I was landing without a permit in New Jersey. Um, so anyway, um, I said, officer, and they're going through my paperwork in the balloon. And you know, the balloon's deflated. It's in there. I'm just thrilled to be on the ground. I can work this out. So anyway, all I know is, I said, officer, would, if you take the handcuffs off, I can call, make a call to Barry Giuliani. Sure. <laughs> I promise you, sir, if you do this. So anyway, they take him off. I call up. I say, hey, uh, Mayor Giuliani, this is Scott Appleman with the Ocean Spray Balloon. He goes, do you have a problem? I said, yes, sir, I do. Let me talk to that. Long story short, two minutes later, my chase crew had a police escort coming through the tunnel. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, love, love that story. But got to do amazing things. This was pre-9-11. Um, some of the types of things. Oh, on that day, that picture right there was on 300 Sunday morning papers. Uh, Labor Day weekend, I want to say it was in 97. Um, so I go up to Ocean Space corporate office um, in Massachusetts uh, for Tuesday morning. I put the balloon up. This guy comes walking up to me and goes, you Scott? I go, yes, sir, I am. He goes, shakes my hand. He goes, I'm Bob. I go, hey, how you doing? He goes, where do you want to go? 
So we ended up with a 10-year program, two balloons. One year, we spent 160 days on the road doing amazingly high-profile type of things, uh, NASCAR, Super Bowl, all different types of things. Amazing, amazing opportunity. Great pay. Great pay. <laughs> I'm not going to kid you. There's days I sat up there and just went, wow, and a paycheck. Um, starting new events. Some of the other things that we do is we do events. And this gentleman over here, um, uh, Mr. Montagon, when he was the economic development director for the city of Albuquerque and, and the state, we had a sister cities program. So we got to travel around and start new events. Um, one of them was down, I think we're in Mexico because you know, nothing bad happens down there. Um, we, did, uh, we started a hot, a hot air balloon event in Chihuahua. Um, that was a lot of fun that we did for five years. And we also went down to Guadalajara when Fred was with uh, the state. Um, and we were out doing an event and stuff like that. This is the day that Fred actually decided to go for a flight on the outside of the balloon basket with a rope tied around his hand. Um, and hanging upside down from a balloon. It was, it was awesome. Anyway, um, let's get back and I keep on going here, Scotty. Um, our big break, a lot of people are kind of curious as to, you know, there's a lot of different things, and I know that I'm preaching to the choir here as far as business goes and stuff like that, but our big break for our company was real simple. I got hooked up on a movie production um, in the early 90s, a movie called Speechless. Um, I was actually, actually kind of felt this one out well enough that I knew how to price it and everything like that, but they wanted 30 balloons to go up to a Ghost Ranch and do a three-day uh, shoot um, with the balloons as background. Inside of the movie was Gina Davis, Michael Keaton, Christopher Reeves, a Rennie Harlan production. Um, and I actually did enough homework where I actually found out what was going on and how this was all going to go down. And that was actually the big break. I got to, after that event, I could buy a van. <laughs> you know, because, uh, well, I know there's probably a banker or two here, but you know that banks really like helping young companies out. <laughs> and you want to fly a hot air what? Um, anyway. So that was our big break. Um, we continued on um, in the 90s. And I know that there's some folks from CVB here, and Tanya and Elise. And uh, um, I, I'm the poster kid for the Albuquerque Convention Visitors Bureau as far as tourism goes. Um, and the reason that that is is that I, I took advantage of the resources that the CVB provides its members. And people just don't understand certain organizations and what you can do with it. But you can only get out of it what you put into it. It's a lot like school. And um, the information and the data that the Convention Business Bureau provided me at the time, especially in the early 90s when Albuquerque was really starting to emerge as a second tier city uh, in the convention market, um, the opportunity was just amazing. And it sure worked out well. And we ended up marketing to all the conventions. Next thing you know, we went from, oh, damn. There we go, more pictures. Um, uh, we went from one. We went from one um, one balloon to about six balloons in a pretty quick way um, because of the convention type of business that we got. Um, so we worked very very closely with CBP, the State Department of Tourism. Um, those resources, uh, I would not be standing here. Um, there, there's a lot of people that can say the same thing. Um, about other organizations, but without a doubt, the CBB uh, got me there. And I remember Elise and I, when I signed up 23, 25 years ago, uh, in high yeah, sure. Uh, uh, I remember the two of us, and I'm going, well, what is it going to do? $200 is a lot of money. So it worked out really, really well. Um, I want to go back, uh, some of the high profile stuff that we got to do. You might remember the guy in the center there, uh, Brian Cranston, um, Al Gore. Um, the people down here below, oops, down below, the, uh, right there with the Dos Equis, that's the president and his wife of Heineken USA, um, who was out here at the Balloon Fiesta last year. And then, of course, our governor. Um, so I apologize for not doing this as well as I should have. CBB, as far as the timing goes. Um, the CBB. Um, I'll come back to that. Sorry. Anyway, um, so in 1999, uh, Rainbow Riders bid, got the Balloon Fiesta contract. 
that's when we exponentially really started to grow. We were doing up to 500 passengers a morning during the balloon fiesta. There was a lot of difference as far as the city and fiesta went at that point. There wasn't quite as much development out there on the north end of town. We could have a lot of balloons that we could have, fiesta could have a lot of balloons out there. But with the development, um, as time went on, there was less and less landing sites. Safety could become an issue. Therefore, there's that balance. So. Um, in the heyday, we did about 525 people per morning during the fiesta. We've had that contract since 1999. Uh, we're still in another five year stint with them, and we all seem to be getting along very well, and, and uh, works real good for both companies. In 2006, uh, my father and I broke ground on a 5,000 square foot office building in the Balloon Fiesta Park area for Rainbow Riders' new headquarters, which at the time I thought was way too big. Now we wish we had bought the lot next to us. Um, in 2009, this is where it got a little bit, a uh, little bit, uh, what are you doing, Scott, type of an approach. In 2009, we decided to expand to Phoenix. And the economy wasn't really that great, as we all remember. Um, but, you know, I looked at the demographics, and one of the things that I, I learned is that, you know, 85 to 90 percent of my business in Albuquerque is tourism based. Um, Albuquerque is that town. Everybody comes here, and what's one of the things you got to do? You got to do the balloon ride. You got to do the tram. You got to go to Santa Fe. You got to go to Old Town. Um, when we looked at Phoenix, there's 65,000 hotel rooms. There's 25 four and five star resorts. There's four million people. 80 degrees in January, and you're still in the confines of the United States. There are some big pluses there. Um, there was 11 balloon ride companies out in Phoenix. Uh, when I entered the market, there was two. Um, Phoenix had also taken a very big hit with what they call the AIG effect. Uh, and that was basically the big incentive and corporate parties that had a lot of scrutiny come down upon them uh, for the type of money and how things were being spent. We felt we had a lot of good things going for us. We're the balloon rider operator of the world's largest balloon event. We come from Albuquerque. We're going to show them how it's done. Um, and we are. But there was, some, there was some days. There was some days there, let me tell you. I got to tell you, um, you go from, OK, I go from being the big fish in a little pond to the exact opposite in Phoenix. And you know, I'm not going to kid you, um, and this sounds so I, backwoods, but uh, there's just some flat out nasty people out there. <laughs> and they'll say anything. I've worked for 20 years before I walked into Phoenix with Hyatt Hotels, with Marriott, with Sheraton, and have an amazing relationship with them. Uh, next thing you know, I have competitors sending letters to those type of folks, VPs of operations, saying that we're unlicensed, that we're uh, uninsured, that we have not a registered company in, the, in the, the state and stuff like that. So we dealt with two years of that stuff, and, uh, and in which we, we had all of our ducks in a row, I absolutely assure you. So as time went on, um, right now we're, we're banging on being the largest company in Phoenix. Um, we have seven large balloons out there on a full-time basis, 6,000 square feet, 20 employees. Um, there's still a lot of politics that are going on out there, but ballooning is filled with backstabbing, self-centered folks. <laughs> and I know there's a few in here that can help agree with that. But the thing is, is that, uh, you know, we're, we're really coming along out there. Um, we are looking at another market in the West as a possible expansion. Um, and uh, we'll see how that goes as time goes on. But I do remember sitting at a Phoenix Convention Visitors Bureau networking event. Now, I was past president of the Albuquerque Convention and Visitors Bureau, and I had a really great time doing it. And man, I knew these things. I could walk on in. I could, I could work the room just like anything. I'm sitting at the Biltmore at a Phoenix CBB thing. And I was just completely overwhelmed. Elise is laughing because I've told her this story. Because I sat in that room, and I walked out of the networking thing a half hour into it and said, what are you doing? You have just presented yourself. You were, I took myself so far out of my comfort zone, it was amazing, absolutely amazing. 
I couldn't even believe it. And as I look back upon that, it was like one of those moments when you just go, so I went back to my house in Scottsdale. I got a bottle of Crown <laughs> and a little glass with some rocks. And I sat on the back patio and said, what am I doing? And I couldn't believe it. I had really taken myself out of my comfort zone. And without a doubt, has been one of the best things I've ever done to challenge myself personally. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that we all go through in life. Um, but getting yourself out of your comfort zone can make you a much better person. And um, it'll provide new opportunities for you, too. The other things that we've had to deal with over time is financing and banks. There's been a lot of changes and stuff like that. Hot air balloon rides is not necessarily what you would call your normal type of product or anything like that. Um, I will tell you straight up, in Albuquerque, it was a lot easier to deal with. It was First Community Bank. Um, and since their um, Dumont and absorption into US Bank, uh, we found a hell of a great partner in New Mexico Bank and Trust. And having those type of people around and stuff and understanding what we do and what it means makes a big difference. We've worked with Wells. We've done a lot of other things with that. But having that personalized approach and stuff like that, in my opinion, is just unreplaceable. Challenges in New Mexico. Simply put, personnel. It's impossible. It's, 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 um, it's a major problem. And as I look at Bob Murphy's and, and Fred's and, and, and Dean Brown and, and, and what we do here, the level of people that are coming out and that are interested in working in, and that are interested in working is diminishing so fast. I remember my father telling me, oh my God, I can't believe you guys and stuff like that and how we, you know, kind of demise from his generation. And then I look at it and this is a true story and this actually happened about two years ago. I'm sitting there interviewing a kid that's 20 years old that's going to uh, CNM. He wants a job. He wants to be a crew chief. My crew chiefs can make 75 to 100 bucks in three hours in the morning. Okay? Come on out, do your thing, get to meet a lot of people, you're flying a balloon, you get to do all this type of stuff. I swear to God, he started texting during the interview. <laughs> and we're done. Convention Visitors Bill. <laughs> CBB. Uh, I'm going to do a little talk about CBB, Balloon Fiesta, and the museum. We have people from everybody here, and thank you so much for coming. The Albuquerque Convention Business Bureau on Tourism. CBB is over 30 years old promoting Albuquerque um, as a destination. It has a $6 million budget. It has 30 directors on the board, staff of 35 to 40 people. Um, it represents an industry that employs 29,000 people. It's the second largest industry in the state of New Mexico with over 6.2 million overnight visitors um, here in Albuquerque. And we have about 15,000 hotel rooms. How'd I do? Yeah, I'll see. Anyway, uh, 15,000 hotel rooms here in the city of Albuquerque. Um, I was on the board of directors for eight, 12 years. I had a great time, awesome experience. It's easy to work on something that you love. It's also easy to work on something when it mutually benefits you and your company. And then when you realize what it's doing and what the impact of how many people you're representing, it's even more fun to do. It's a great organization, um, and I thank them, and I, and I can't even tell them how much I appreciate what they've done uh, for the city and for my business. A lot of politics that are going on, and I'm going to go ahead and bring it up because I don't have to be a CBB guy at this time. But the problem is, is that the simple fact is that tourism is a very competitive industry. It is so competitive, and people are fighting for your tourism dollars, whether it's this place or Scottsdale or San Diego or Orlando or New York City. And everybody has their unique little thing to be done. But the city of Albuquerque um, has to look at itself as a whole. It has to look at itself as an overall destination. We are not a city of Albuquerque, and we ignore the amenities that are adjacent to us, whether it be a Hyatt or a Sandia or a Zleta or an Akama or these type of things. And we've had some issues um, straight up in, in um, there's, there's a lot of political struggle relative to how we can market the city of Albuquerque. And it's imperative that the people of the city of Albuquerque understand that tourism is good business that brings in good money. If we're going to continue to even hold our position, um, nonetheless, potentially stop the decline, which in my opinion is kind of happening in the comparative set at this point, we've got to embrace our neighbors and we need to be able to bring them to the table and help promote them. As I sit here right now, I'm sure many of you are aware of the development that Sandia is getting ready to do. 
they're you know, putting in another 12,000 square foot spa, a four story parking structure. Well, why are we putting a four story parking structure in? Hmm. Well, maybe it's because they're getting ready to put a whole another tower in, another 200,000 square feet of meeting space. So there are some things sitting here that we need to deal with. And as a community and as business people, yes, I understand the discussions of casinos and how it may draw tax dollars out. They ain't going away. We need to make lemonade out of lemons in this particular discussion. And I won't go any further on that, but I do have some feelings on it. Um, the balloon fiesta. Wow. What an organization. Um, 43 years old. Started by Sid Cutter, Tommy Rutherford. Sid passed away two years ago. Tommy, as we uh, all know, is, is still around, and he's out here doing his things. Balloon Fiesta has 24 board of directors, $5 million budget, 11 full-time staff members. It's a 501c3 nonprofit organization. This, this, is, this is a number that will kind of shock you. 1,000 volunteers. 1,000. Operates year-round. Fiesta Field to City Park. Balloon Fiesta gets to basically use it, well, leases it for six weeks out of the year. It's a $20 million facility that's sitting out there that the city has put the money into. Multi-use, uh, nothing in the world like it. I've been to balloon events everywhere. There's just nothing like it. It's awesome. We've had amazing support from governors, mayors, uh, Marty, RJ. Um, I know Fred was very involved in, in helping do that. Um, our senators and legislative branches have been very, very good, and they've seen all the potential there. And we can't thank them enough. We have a couple things that we need to to put on their radar, though, for ballooning, uh, for balloon fiesta. And um, I'm not trying to be an alarmist, but I am going to tell you this, that there is a trend that's changing. And, and when I talk about the tourism trends, it is something that's changing and something we need to deal with. But when it comes to balloon fiesta, we are the largest balloon, in, balloon event in the world with 554 balloons last year. Ha ha, we're getting close. 90, sorry. <laughs> Multitasking apparently is not big on me. 97 special shapes. Last year, 856,000 people coming through the gates in nine days. With over 1,000 media represents, um, 154 media organizations and outlets, 20 countries, and 35 states represented. There's no way we could get all those people to come to Albuquerque in any period of time like that. And when you look at the media opportunities there, I'm going to give you one example that I was part of that is just, it is just one out of hundreds of stories that were done. Um, but we did a, a piece with CNN Travel. And our, the piece was uh, a couple's first balloon flight. Okay? Now, this worked out amazingly well. And this is and working with these types of organizations. And this is a perfect example of all the groups coming together. CBB. Uh, Tanya and her group brought CNN in. Balloon Fiesta, they wouldn't come here if it wasn't for Balloon Fiesta. Then I got the opportunity to do this fight in the Dos Equis Balloon. So we have really multiplied all the options of what we could do, all the opportunities there of getting the best publicity. This CNN play, uh, piece, which is two and a half minutes long, um, plays every two weeks uh, for a full day, for a year. And it all talks about the destination of Albuquerque, the first balloon flight, and what Albuquerque has to offer. So these are the type of things that we, these events do bring in to, um, to the city that I don't know that they would. Um, there's, yeah, we're almost getting there, Scott. There's another one. Now this one here, this was, this is absolutely amazing, okay? I'm gonna come to the Balloon Museum. I got Balloon Museum people here too. They're, they're, they're here too. Anyway, so Spirit Magazine. Spirit Magazine, it's the in-flight. So I'm going to Phoenix on Thursday morning. This is hilarious. It's snowing here. It's coming down. I'm waiting there. Apparently, we have only one de-icing truck at the airport that was working on that day. <laughs> Snow is coming down and stuff like that. I'm 7 o'clock. I'm drinking my coffee, and I've got this attorney next to me and everything like that. And I'm, I had gotten a link from uh, the CBB saying, hey, we're going to be in Spirit Magazine and stuff like that. Take a peek at it. I'm drinking my coffee. go, oh, the article. So I go through and it says, oh, a day in Albuquerque, page 96. I go there, 
and I open it up, and the first picture's got, it's the background with all the, the picture balloons on it. Second one's of the tramway. Third one, I open up and went, oh my god. And I, I just, my jaws dropped, okay? The reason is that a page in the Spirit Magazine is $36,000, okay? 36 grand. And this is something that everybody can just go ahead and afford to drop when you're in the balloon business. Um, and I was out there, and the flight attendant walked by. She goes, you OK? And I go, uh-huh. She goes, what's wrong? I go, this is my company. And she goes, uh-uh. I go, mm -hmm. She goes, let me see it. So inside the article, it says President Scott Apple. And she goes, are you Scott? And I go, yeah. And she goes, she high fives me. And anyway, <laughs> boom, that just happened. Now, the best part about it is we've got another one coming out for Phoenix and uh, for Scott's, for, uh, Southwest, and then we also got them for Delta and United coming out. So these are the type of things that have just worked really, really well for us. And I had to tell you because these are the things, those media fans are getting the opportunity to have them here. They wouldn't be here. They were here for the balloon fiesta. They were here to see the museum. They were here to see the tram. They were here to see Old Town. That's what they were here for. But they wouldn't have come, I think, for just one of those items. So, you know. Social media, I could go on about social media. Um, personally, I think part of it's way overrated, although I think that a lot of the stuff, you know, hell, I don't know, they can shoot out statistics all you want and stuff like that, but we've gone through a, quite a change in stuff. And it seems like as a business owner and advertiser, and I have my marketing director here, and all we're ever doing is, is bowing down to whatever Google wants and trying to figure out what they're going to change this week. And it's always another change. And it's an amazing industry. I mean, I thought Polaroid had it figured out, give you a camera and go buy the film. Google really has it figured out as far as it goes on trying to get their algorithms and stuff like that, and how social media is important, how Facebook's going to do this, and how you got to tweet. Now, the bottom line is, is um, it's there, and we, and we try to, we, we, we're part of it. Um, and, and we, as a destination, need to stay part of it, as Balloon Fiesta does. Uh, and, and the whole city of Albuquerque. But some of the facts, um, you know, they're up there, you know. Um, I've got some other one here, but the Facebook page for uh, Balloon Fiesta, 80,000 likes. You know, you're drawing some people into 10 million impressions during the month of October. Um, and that's up from 6 million the year before. Um, the number of stories created on Facebook, over 150,000 for Balloon Fiesta. So, you know, there, there's obviously some stuff that's very, very important. Photos with the hashtag Balloon Fiesta, um, 30,500 posted up on, on uh, Instagram. So these are the type of things that we get to do and have fun. Let's talk a little bit about economic development. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Anderson Abruzzo, Albuquerque Anderson Abruzzo International Balloon Museum. We have a few of the board members here. Um, thank you very much for coming. I'm also one of the board members. This facility, once again, is another sign of the commitment to ballooning that the city of Albuquerque has done. We have a $25 million building out there with the most amazing artifacts in there. Our history is so rich with what we have to offer as far as Albuquerque goes. And, and it's something that we as locals tend to probably overlook. You know? In all honesty, when's the last time you were at Acoma? You know what I mean? We kind of take, we take it for granted. Um, people come in, I mean, I, we fly people all the time. Oh, you come in from Chicago, New York, wherever it is. Oh, man, we're going to go do, we're going to do the balloon ride, then we're going to the museum, and then we're going to go and, you know, blah, 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 and do that type of stuff. The International Balloon Museum is absolutely a stunning facility. It's been a political, um, collateral victim at times. Um, Marty and uh, that administration was the ones that made that all happen. It took years to do it, uh, to get it there. Uh, the Abruzzos and Anderson family have put so much work and so much resources into it. Um, and to have that kind of combination of private and public funding um, is something that we need to embrace and to continue and help support. The museum itself and the foundation board is working much more, much more diligently at being a real business and going on out and trying to, to create uh, more support for it and to become more of an active part of the, of the uh, overall tourism industry.
How are we doing on time? Questions? Am I, am I on the right track? Is this OK? OK. All right. Sorry, Doug. I'm, I'm really not that formal of a guy. This jacket's killing me. No. <laughs> anyway, anyway um, economic development. Um, um, The use of the balloon fiesta as an economic development tool, the use of ballooning as an economic development tool is very, very effective. Um, I can refer to companies like General Mills, Bendix King, um, Philip 66, uh, who Philip 66, just for the record, I didn't even realize this, they pay the highest amount of taxes to the state of Mexico as anybody. Of course, it's you know for minerals and oil, but I didn't really realize that that's a big number. Um, you know, um, we've had Albuquerque Economic Development. The um, I'm sure that Bob has worked several times with a lot of different groups coming into Fiesta, um, as well as the Economic Development Office with the City of Albuquerque and the state have used the Balloon Fiesta as a terrific platform to bring people in to get them in to entertain them. Um, the Honeywells, those type of things. Uh, so the use of ballooning in Albuquerque and New Mexico has been very, very critical to that of some of the economic development deals that have been put out there. I'd like to talk a little bit about what's next uh, for ballooning and tourism. Um, there's, there's some things, I mean, it, it was kind of silly last year. The city of Albuquerque finally made hot air ballooning legal inside the city. I'm currently um, in a lawsuit. I'm being sued as a public nuisance uh, for our balloons um, here in the city of Albuquerque. This has been going on for three years. It's absolutely the most ridiculous thing that I've ever seen. Uh, quote, unquote, we are going to get ballooning out of the city of Albuquerque. And the worst part about this is that I will not say the name, but I, huh? No. Um, I will not say the name. But they made their fortunes here in Albuquerque developing the city of Albuquerque. And it's the most absurd thing that's going on, but it still is going. But Mayor Barry and the city council were very supportive, and we're no longer in a zoning violation. We can land and take off. Um, anyway, uh, so the support of the elected officials is instrumental. You know, our city councilors and uh, the mayor's office um, They've been very, very supportive. I mean, we all know that it's a good thing going down, and why not jump on the, the, the train with it? But there's a lot of people that go the extra, extra mile. Um, there's some other things that we need to get more out of in order to make this continue, to, to continue this on. I'm a little bit concerned with the complacency relative to the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. Last year in Annoy, France, they did the world's largest launch of 450 balloons in a one hour period of time. Okay. Now, you can sit here and say, oh, that's awesome, because we go back to our roots 230 years ago. The simple fact is, ladies and gentlemen, it's a business. And if we want to maintain the world's largest balloon event, I don't know about you, wherever I go, they don't know I'm a balloonist. Say I'm from Albuquerque. Oh, you guys got that balloon deal. When is that, in October? Um, we did a destination master plan back in the early 2000s um, with the CBB. The three things that identified the city of Albuquerque to people wanting to come here. Ballooning, landscape, and culture. We still have all three. We got to take care of all three. We need to reinvest. This, we need to reinvest uh, the balloon fiesta level. There's some items at the balloon fiesta that could be modified. I think that we need to get some new blood and some board direction in there. Um, there should be, um, there should be, um, Looking at the bigger picture um, as we go down the road. We're at 43 years right now. And just because you're on the top doesn't mean you're going to stay on the top because you put yourself there. Um, I'm going to say that right now there's a terrific opportunity for the city of Albuquerque in the state of New Mexico. Um, I'm on a group of, I'm on a committee that met, that has been meeting. But we met last week, and we're making a bid for the World Championships in 2016 here in Albuquerque. It would extend Balloon Fiesta an additional week the week before. It would bring 55 countries to the city of Albuquerque. It would bring the media that goes with those 55 countries. 
it would extend Fiesta another week. Did I say that? Hmm. <laughs> Lodgers tax, hotel rooms, gas. Um, in addition to that, the if we were to be successful, this bid comes out March, uh, mid March, um, and we have a very good chance of getting it. But we, but we, but it's not going to be given to us. We got to earn it. This balloon fiesta has committed three hundred thousand dollars to host it. We need to raise another hundred grand for a host facility, or we need to get some of our hoteliers, partners in the city of Albuquerque, to understand the value of it in the bigger picture. Or maybe we can get the State Department of Tourism to help assist on this extra hundred grand for the international exposure. But we've got a great opportunity to bring and to reinvigorate. If we were to bring 55 different countries into the Balloon Fiesta event um, two years from now, it would be amazing. The event's held every two years. There would be a practice event, if you would, in 2015, where we would host and bring in those pilots so they could have a practice, uh, practice week, if you would. Um, it's being held in Brazil this year. So there's a terrific opportunity, and you're going to undoubtedly see some press and some uh, efforts going out there. So if there's anybody that you know that can help do that, it would be quite beneficial to the city and the destination. Uh, and I'm very, I'm very passionate about uh, uh, doing this because I, I don't think that people, we cannot let you don't appreciate it until it's gone happen in this discussion. We had 1,000 balloons in 2000. We're down to 500. It's because of landing sites. That's all good. OK, I get all that. But we need, to, we need to make sure that we preserve it. We need to invigorate it. If we're talking about doubling the length of Fiesta and bringing in 55 countries when we had 20 here this year, talking about some huge numbers. Too many soapboxes? OK. Let's talk a little bit about Fiesta as far as what you guys can do or what you can help us do. You see these balloons up here with banners on and stuff like that. Everybody thinks, oh, gee whiz, how do I? It must be so expensive to be in the balloon fiesta. It really isn't. It's $3,500 to have the right to fly a banner inside the balloon fiesta. And those banners cost a couple grand. I happen to know a guy that can help you with it. Anyway, uh, but there's a lot of different, there was 80 different bannered um, balloons, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, in this year's last, last year's balloon fiesta, and probably another um, 40 corporate balloons, or what we call like branded balloons, like the Dos Equis or the Wells Fargo type of uh, balloons. So there is an opportunity to bring those type of things um, here at a local level. I think a lot of folks um, feel as though that it's out of reach or it's out of touch for them. It can't be done, um, and, it, and it really isn't. The, the event is so regional and national. It is an international event, but in, as far as reach goes, it's that, it's that national and regional aspect of it. Um, let's see. Wow, well, I've got all the way through that. In conclusion, pictures. There's balloon museum stuff. City of Albuquerque balloon. Economic development, we use that balloon all over. Balloon Museum, what a facility. I don't know, I'm, I'm hoping everybody's been out there. Um, other than doing a, being a balloon museum, it's a terrific facility for that of hosting parties and bringing, um, and whether it's from a wedding to a, a group. Uh, but I mean, looking out those windows, uh, we have the Diamond Club, uh, we have the uh, uh, sky boxes where you can basically have the indoor aspect of being on the field for the, you know, the, the VIP club there. Um, it's a terrific venue, a great location, um, and right now uh, it's starting to get up on its two feet and get marketed in, in a much more aggressive way. Okay. You know, they always say that it's a, you always got to make them laugh at the end and have a strong conclusion. Um, <laughs> the rest of it's all, yes. Anyway, um, you know what, this is real simple. Uh, I've been very blessed and very, very lucky. I've had some of the most amazing people around me working with me. There's been amazing resources that have been provided to me. My mom and dad taught me right from wrong. My dad taught me that uh, you always do it right. He said, you got to get up in the morning, look in the mirror, make sure that you did what you did yesterday, is, is that you can look at yourself. And I've tried to live my life by doing that. Uh, one of the most important things that I find, and especially in today's market, 
which is changing so fast. And I don't know if it's for the better. I'm not going to kid you. But it's becoming so impersonalized. It's becoming no more about relations. And I, this is the one area where I just will not compromise or I will not change. I'm a relationship, long-term guy. And all I want to do is go out and treat my clients, my customers, my people um, the way I would like to be treated. And um, I think that as time goes on, we as business people need to still instill that to the, the younger generations that are coming in here. I'm going to close with one last little story that uh, kind of says the whole deal. I was doing the Ocean Spray gig. I'm standing at a gas station in Oklahoma, somewhere in Oklahoma. I-40 becomes just kind of a blur when you do a lot of things to the East Coast. And uh, I'm standing there at a gas pump, and I'm filling up the van. It says Ocean Spray Balloon Team. It says Rainbow Riders on it. Feeling like I'm really cool. This is cool. The gentleman walks up to me. He goes, you Scott? I go, yes, sir, I am. Now, you don't know how this is going to turn out when you're in Oklahoma. <laughs> he raises out, he shakes my hand. He goes, my name's Buddy. He goes, do you remember me? No, sir, I don't. Well, you flew me in the missus about five years ago in Albuquerque, and it was on her birthday. And she still talks about that particular flight. I just want to thank you for bringing that memory and making that possible for her. So that and a paycheck. <laughs> so anyway, that's all I got. <laughs>